Hello, hello. Thank you guys for coming. How many people are there? I can't, uh, I, I ask questions that I can't actually answer. It's perfect. Um, so, uh, welcome. So the, uh, little update on what's been going on. This is my first live chat, so I'm probably going to drool on myself. I'm going to forget that it's recording. Um, I'll probably just walk away at some point and completely forget what was just happening. But I'll come back, so no worries. The um, uh, latest and greatest is that the racing season is over. Uh, there's still some one-off things. There's still the chance of doing Baja 1000, and there's still some other things, but I'm kind of ready to get going again. Um, the European Rallycross stuff is still kind of in the mix. There's uh, it, It's over, but um, there was an appeal with the FIA, so we don't know if we got second place or third place yet, but we're going to find out soon, um, November 5th. One more trip to Europe, which makes um, 15 trips over there this summer, and uh, a few more miles for Air France, and then um, uh, and then we'll know where we're at. But either way, second or third place, it was an awesome season over there. It's really a competitive series. A lot of people have been doing it for a long time. A lot of really, really fast guys and great competitors. It's something sometimes we don't have in the states. Really, the fans are so educated over there they just know everything about the cars the sport we have great fans here that love cars um there it's like the 85 year old ladies know everything about my car it's the it's it's like everything in between too it's really bizarre but um but it makes it it makes it kind of fun and uh part of it i think is just because the sport is sort of hyperactive rallycross and i think the u.s fans are going to dig that um no, there's no Adam and Rutledge coming, by the way, Sherry. Just uh, just so you know. And I don't have a writer, so you're going to have to be a little bit on the patient side. I'm just going to babble, basically. Um, at SEMA, first of all, give me the like symphonic way to say your name. Sion He. I'll just, can I just call you Kim? Um, we'll be... Uh, I don't know what booth. I'll be at the Ford booth. Mostly, probably stopping by Motegi, and um, but on Wednesday I'll be outside doing like drift demos. Uh, fastest quarter mile pass I've ever made. I don't know. I've done standing miles, um, but uh, Mr. Papadakis is the quarter mile king. Ryan, he's like in the six second range. Um, standing mile, the fastest I went was 223 miles an hour, and that was in a street legal Ford GT twin turbo. It was awesome. Um, Tanya, wow, it's a big one. Let me read this. Is it Tanya? Very nice of you, by the way. Uh, driver situation, mom, when you. Um, yes, I have had situations when your gut flips and you know something's not right. Those are tricky, isn't it? I mean, even yesterday, I went on a motorcycle ride up a canyon, and I and I remember thinking, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff has happened this week with friends and, um. Uh, I just don't want, just didn't want to push it, and but it doesn't matter. Sometimes when you're not pushing it, things just happen. So it's, um, it's tricky. I think you just have to sort of, uh, um, refocus. And I, I usually decide that thinking about those things is what's going to take my focus away from what I'm doing and cause the problem. So I stop thinking about it. Uh, sunny, nice. That's awesome. Okay. I want to ask you, this is from Marcelo. What's your experience working with Suchia? Okay, so I actually didn't work with Suchia except for in the Long Beach scene um, where he was kind of looking over his shoulder and saying rookies and stuff like that. Um, they, uh, um, the, they shot for 10 days in Tokyo, or near Tokyo in Japan, and then the rest of the shooting was all done in L.A. And uh, he wasn't there for that shooting. He was just there for a quick long beach in and out. And then in Japan they did some driving. But uh, it ended up just being that one downhill scene where one car – where they do a couple little tandems. And it's it's uh, kind of a, a really nice switch back, um, back and forth. And uh, that's the only scene that they, they actually shot with Tsuchiya um, near the driver's seat. Um, but I have uh, spent a lot of time with KG doing 
uh, Formula D for the last eight years and, you know, his D1 events. I did several D1 events. Um, what is my surfboard setup? I have an Infinity and a Jack surf, surf Shop longboard out there, Mr. Trainer. I don't have uh, the, all the stuff that Reese has, unfortunately. He's got uh, he's got lots of cool stuff, but um, surfing is one of the few things that I'm not really good at that I still really enjoy doing. I, I you know how you you end up doing the things that you think you're good at. I, I'm not good at surfing, but I really love it. It's fun. Um, but I'm more of a longboarder, maybe sacrilegious to somebody like you, Brian. But um, where I live, Old Man's Doheny area. Um, it's a lot of longboarding. Favorite track of the ERC? I was watching a video yesterday of Austria, Justa, and um, that track is sick. It's got, it's like gravel braking zones, pavement turns, gravel acceleration zones. So what it forces you to do is basically just come in sideways uh, into the corners, wait for the tarmac to catch you, and then you just spin tires on the way out. It's a really cool track. But I, I would say the number one track, for me anyway, is Sweden, just because it has two jumps and it's pretty kick-ass. Any siblings? Yeah, I'm the youngest of... Well, if you really want to know, I've got a real sister, a half-sister, a stepsister, a half-brother, and a stepbrother. So there's six total. Grew up with four. I was the youngest of those four. Um... Relation with Colin Gabero. This is uh, Colin. So I met Colin uh, X Games 2006, and um, it was the first year that cars were in the X Games, and it was this huge thing. They got Colin McRae, and I don't get starstruck very often. I've been fortunate to do some red carpet stuff and meet a lot of uh, celebrities, and and I was starstruck when I met Colin McRae. He was just bigger than life in my eyes, and and. Um, but he just turned out to be the most down-to-earth, nicest guy. We said we were going to meet at a certain time after testing. And, you know, he's just one of those guys who's texting you on five minutes away, and he's there right on time. And uh, so really unbelievable guy on and off the track. Um, in that first year, I had a chance to ride in his car with him. I learned so much about rally racing just in, like, four miles uh, because I knew the road, and I could see how he was taking the road differently than I was, and he was using these dips in the road and the compressions for braking zones and, and just using a third dimension that I just wasn't getting out of the car. It was great. Then I took him in my drift car at Irwindale, actually, with Samuel Hubinet. We went out there. Uh, Samuel was testing with Nick Hogan. And we went out there, drove my car around with uh, Colin, and then actually got in the Viper and had uh, Colin drive around, and he nailed the Irwindale track. Um, first and second try, it was awesome. Um, but uh, so I, it, it, we kind of formed a friendship that year to finish your question, Cabrera. And then um, after that, uh, uh, every year at X Games, spoke to him. I had a couple texts back and forth, which I still have on my phone, actually. Um, before uh, before he died. Um, since it's difficult to uh, see out of the Fiesta to use the open face helmet as opposed to folds. Open face helmet, Kim, is kind of like a European thing. Um, because the microphone's set up and that's just how they did rally racing and uh, um, I'll probably go to a closed face helmet for next year. Um, but the open face, there's a company called Peltor that it makes the you know ear ear things for shooting guns and stuff and but they they kind of had the market on the open face helmets and that went on everybody um so i'll probably go close face for next year i like the awry helmets uh let's see landon um just drop my i'm guessing that's your wife you dropped off to go to school um to become a podiatrist. I mean, when I finished building my drift and rally cars, I it myself. I was wondering what was the best way to get sponsored because it's ca coasting. Um, getting sponsored in a drift car. This is probably a question from a few people, but um, Landon, it's uh, it's tricky, and it's sorry that I'm five minutes behind on the questions. By the way, I'm going to pick it up here, so just give me a pause, and I'll pick it up. But the um, Landon uh, getting sponsored in a drift car is tricky. It's uh, I think it's about being trustworthy, and I've said that before, but I think uh, drifting, there's too many guys going out real big in practice, hitting cones, spinning, just kind of going for the big moves, and, and it's more about starting slowly and building yourself and, and never hitting the cones, never spinning. 
Um, by doing that, there's and, and at some drift events, practice events, even there's still tire contacts. That's really the first sponsor, probably is a tire sponsor. And um, you can, uh, as long as you're kind of trustworthy looking in the car, they sort of assume you might be trustworthy out of the car. It's funny how that works, but essentially by sponsoring you, they're trusting you with their job. And uh, so you need to kind of make sure you're that guy that they that they speak to and that they um, look at on the track and think, wow, that guy's not just going to completely trash it all and take my career with him. A little dramatic, I know. Um, top three cars you want to drive. So I want to drive the Veyron, even though I hear that it's kind of uh, soft and squishy but really fast. Uh, I'd like to drive a new Zonda. Um, the last one I drove was the ZF. I'd like to drive the, ca the carbon one. And anything on the Nürburgring. Um, so you'll be drifting outside. Um, yeah, we'll be drifting outside, Sonny. Welcome back. <laughs> Six minutes now. This is okay. I'm going to haul ass now. Um, I'll be drifting outside Wednesday. Ken and JR will be out there Tuesday. And then I'll be out there on Wednesday um, in the rallycross car, actually. And the rallycross car will all have uh, Brian Deegan and I will both be there for these guys for Rockstar. Um, so has anybody else gotten you still getting used to Lion as an operating system? Because I keep switching my fingers and your questions swipe all over the place. Um, would you let your children race? Considering yes, racing is inherently dangerous. People know that. Um, uh, if my kids, when I have them want to get into racing, yeah, that's great. I, I think it's a, it's a great way to make a living, um, if it's your dream and if it's fun for you, but, um, there's, uh, there are inherent dangers with it. So it's, uh, completely, um, uh, you know, you, you really choose to do that. That event just was very, very crowded. There was a lot going on and, um, uh, and the way that Rick died was in an airplane, which, um is so unlikely, especially Bonanza. Those are supposed to be really safe private airplanes. How many times do I bite my tongue during a race? Really, Rebecca? Come on. A lot, let's be honest. It is it is out all the time. I can touch my nose with it now because it's like tongue calisthenics. It's been swinging around so much. It's I don't have an explanation that. I, my mom has a picture when I was building like one of those little uh, wood models. I think it was a tow truck. And my tongue was like almost wrapped around in my ear. It's just a concentration thing. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been seeing a therapist, a tongue therapist, and I'm getting it uh, sorted out. Not really. Um, is there anything else in my professional, personal life I want to try? Trisha? Yeah, of course. I want to try lots of stuff. Um, I want to try getting a, in better shape. <laughs> I want to. I mean, there's like not uh, uh, the amount of travel I've been doing the last couple of years. It's been it's been tricky to focus on uh, a lot of stuff. But professional life, huge amount of things going on. Personal life, obviously, yeah, everybody's got gaps to fill in that. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, eventually I want a family. Eventually I want to uh, um, be um, have a little bit more free time, but. Uh, the problem is I just love driving cars and I love what I do. So uh, it's a conundrum I'm in right now, but it's a good one. Hey, how are you? How are you, Kevin? Good to see you. Eight minutes ago, Kevin. Sorry about that. Um, breathtaking car I've ever had a chance to drive. Um, the Fiesta when I first drove it was pretty ridiculous. Uh, I'd say the Zonda. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Um, I, I didn't know I wanted to be a racer until I was in college, Carrie. Uh, I mean, I knew that I wanted to be, and, but I never thought it was like possible until I was in college. I worked for an inventor and I got, uh, I've kind of got this whole entrepreneurial, um, learning from him. He invented amusement rides. His name was Bill Kitchen. And this guy was making a living doing what he loved to do. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I didn't know it was possible. And, uh, it turns out that it is. So, um, that's, uh. That, that's when I first really saw racing as a as a possible business um, and living uh, was when I was about 20. Um, would you be on board for as long as the UK Top Gear has been? 
Um, those guys have grown old on screen, and you know what? They have fun every single day at work. So yeah, I would do that. Come on, really? That's a that'd be a great a great gig for that long. Are you complaining to Are you planning to compete in Formula Drift ever again? I am actually uh, sitting down with some Formula Drift guys today, um, but uh, uh, right after this. But it's um, uh, but I don't know. Uh, I think Rallycross is going to be strong. I've been watching all of the Formula Drift shows on television, and I haven't been to. I wasn't able to go to a single one this year, which I'm really bummed about. I really wanted to go to Irwindale. Um, and Scott, I don't know who the American Stig is. Come on, nobody does. It's not a real person. Um, actually, it is a real person. And he, she is a great driver. But uh, and it's uh, been a pleasure to work with he, she, it. Um, how would you recommend getting into a career like yours? I started through instruction, uh, like actually got a job, actually I got a job as a mechanic in return for seat time in a race car, got my license, did a couple races, and then would start to instruct anybody that I was quicker than, and then got into the world of ride and drives, which, uh, just do search for ride and drives. There's marketing events around there where, um, interested people can get jobs working for companies like AMCI. ESI, Skip Barber, things like that as an instructor, and then you kind of get the lingo and get to get to meet a lot of people. That's important. Daily Driver, um, I've got. Uh, I still have an E46 M3 that I've had for a long time. I've got a Porsche Turbo and a Ford Raptor truck that uh, I've been driving more than I thought I would. Um, has Rutledge convinced me to step into a next car yet? Not quite yet. It's a good question, though. Um, Steven, you are very welcome. It's my pleasure to do this. Um, how did you start driving? Or are you just an underground drifter? Okay, so, I mean, I was the kid that was always into cars, just like uh, a lot of you probably are. But um, it was messing around until... Um, until I met that inventor. And... Uh, you know, I make it sound pivotal to meet some entrepreneurial guy. I was, I was messing around until I came to that impasse and I was in school and I didn't know what I wanted to do for a living. I couldn't imagine being a lab rat, couldn't imagine being a doctor, which is what I was going to school for, but didn't get very far. Graduated undergrad, but um, it was a scenario where it's just like uh, um, I just wanted to take a swing at uh, doing what I think wouldn't be work. And... Uh, and through a lot of perseverance, it, it has started to work out. Um, I do like other sports. Um, I, I, a lot of my childhood was spent in Scotland, so I, play, I grew up playing a lot of soccer. Football, as they would say. Stut you, Jim. That's how they say hello in Scotland, if you didn't know that. Um, nice mirror. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's a mirror back there, isn't there? Um, let's see. What is the driving maneuver you did in the Viper? Uh, it was a 360. It was a 360, started out in probably third or fourth gear, did a wheel spin 360, so uh, got more wheel spin to get it to spin around instead of pulling the handbrake. Once it's backwards, hit the brake, put it in second gear, let it rotate around, and then just dump the clutch when it's facing forward, and there's a big smoky... Smoky burnout on the way out, and Rutledge's drool swinging around a convertible and screaming seriously like a little girl. It was re it was offensive. Yeah. Um. Have you or the other guys gotten a speeding ticket in the show? Um. I used to do a show called Supercars Exposed, and I did get a few speeding tickets and paid for them. It's a good point, though. Probably should have asked the production company to maybe pitch in on that one. Um, do you write your own voiceovers for Top Gear? Uh, they start out with somebody else writing them, and sometimes you can probably tell that. But uh, then we, we try to adjust them to make them more um, conversational. Uh, voiceovers are a tricky entity because sometimes uh, you need to... Um, you know, set the tone and match the tone of what uh, Rupert... Um, you know, our great director has has kind of put into the show, whether it's like a, a menacing 
um, kind of low tone, like on the Raptor versus the Halo Jumper, or whether it's a, a race and there's lots of crazy stuff going. So sometimes it can be tricky to match that tone and get it clean. The best voiceover guys in the world uh, are the UK Top Gear guys. I love watching their stuff. And, and, and having been in TV now, you know TV's not my main job, but having been in TV for a while and watching... Um, you know, seeing behind the scenes, watching their shows, it's a, it's incredible to, to see how good they really are. Um, the Rockstar Scion V8, one of the things I'm going to be talking to some Formula D guys about in one hour. So it's a good question. It's sitting in a warehouse right now, and it shouldn't be. I would like it to be in my garage and, uh, and play with it occasionally because that car is badass. Um, that was from Chris. Uh, that's kind of your, that's kind of your, you get the ton hanging out from Krista. Um, wait, I've missed the last sentence. Where did you get the tongue? You know what? It, it, I noticed the tongue hanging. I never thought that I'd really be talking about my tongue hanging out. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I noticed the tongue hanging out, um, when, things do get too hectic to like talk. There's a, there's an amount of driving when you have like a cognitive buffer where you can just talk and say what you want to the camera or whatever, even while you're drifting around and stuff, but then something happens and you have to react to it. For me, I stop talking, start focusing. And if there's one more level, then apparently tongue comes out. But like I said, seeing a therapist, it's going to be all good. Not really seeing a therapist, but, uh, hi from Italy, Bridget. Good to see you. Um, when driving a Morgan for TB, this is uh, Krista again. It was the first time I've ever seen your composure on calm demeanor kind of slip. Why? Because that car was freaking scary. Uh, it was 160 miles an hour we did, something like that, and the hood was flapping, the windshield, there's water coming through the windshield. That car's not made for anything. Side story on the Morgan. We're out on Air Force Base in England. This This car, keep in mind... Um, this is for really, like, fairly wealthy, prestigious, old British guys that have, like, pressed ties and super crazy thick Margaret Thatcher-like accents, you know, like, nuts, uh, you know, talk about tea and never say an impolite word. And I call them and I'm complaining that in third gear it won't drift. And the guy on the other line was like, whoa, 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 okay, well, it's not exactly designed for drifting, well, or drifting, you mean, you know, he's like going crazy on a little bit, like so nervous about what the hell I was about to do to his car. And the car was just as uncomfortable. And so, yes, I lost my composure a little bit, but we got it done, went through the set of tires, job done. Um, GTR LFA, I take the LFA. GTR is nice, but for how I like to drive cars sometimes, uh, on the track, the GTR is a little too automated for me. On the street, unbelievable. Plus the sound of the LFA is ridiculous. Um, I dropped my life. Oh, your life. It was your life, Landon. I'm sorry. And you're welcome. And good luck with the drifting. Um, Christopher, Top Gear Rocks, thank you very much. But why must you destroy the cars? Let's just take a break for a second and look back at what Top Gear is. It's 12-year-olds having fun with Tonka toy cars that somebody else paid for. And when 12-year-olds get in a room for long enough with some breakable things, those things get broken. And that's what has happened uh, with this show yesterday, tomorrow. You're right. We destroy stuff. It's not, it's, not, it's not great, but literally now we're trying to find ways to blow things up. It's not, it's not right, I know. Um, but we, we do have some fun. Uh, yesterday I was driving a car that I really wanted to keep. And the fact that I wanted to keep it so bad meant the other guys had to destroy it. That's what happens. Um, what is the most fun to drive in race cars? I, I would say, let's see, who was that? Uh, that was Anton. Anton, I'd say that, uh, the rallycross cars for me are most fun. I still miss rally racing through the forest where you have a co-driver and you're having to think a lot more. It's a lot less just memorizing a short track and a lot more uh, absorbing everything. And I, I've been watching WRC. I think it's on um, Velocity Network now, kind of delayed. 
unbelievable. Um, I love watching WRC. Ken Block has been doing actually very good in that, and uh, it's it's just awesome. So uh, I would love to get back into stage rally at some point, but I, I like variety. So I am uh, tasting new new sports and, and learning new things, and that's what's fun for me. Um, Bridget, thank you. Uh, stick my tongue out when I focus. Oh, good, another tongue sticker. Don't take that the wrong way, but that's Jennifer. That's Jennifer. Thanks. Just the two of us. Um, Jordan, will I be at the Race of Champions? No. I'm best man at a wedding that weekend. That was a tough call. Uh, but it's an old friend of mine, um, Mike. And uh, he was, he's probably my oldest friend. And I met him. I, I didn't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of old friends because military background, military uh, brat. So he's my uh, friend from high school. Um, and um, we've kept in touch ever since. So I'm looking forward to that wedding. Uh, American Top Gear, I think in February sometime, is coming back on, Alain. I'm um, looking to buy, rent a house in San Juan Capistrano. Um, I need a tour guide song. Uh, any areas of, no, San Juan Capistrano is cool. Uh, I'm actually looking for a house in San Juan Capistrano too. So uh, hopefully I'll see you at the, uh, the what is it, Hennessy's and Dana Point. It's pretty much the only bar around. Um... Alain, thank you for the clarification. Appreciate it. Yeah, glad you like the new season. Uh, cheap car driven on Top Gear. It's one I just drove. I can't talk about it, but uh, I outrigged it so it wouldn't roll over, and I had so much fun driving on two wheels. I can't even tell you. It's called skiing a car, and I just drove around on two wheels. It was great. Um, for our first car accident, it was horrific. Arnold, thanks for bringing up memories. Um... No, it was uh, in a Honda Civic, 83 Civic wagon. I rolled it seven times end over end. It was really, really bad. Car crashes in racing happen and are horrific as well, of course, but um, on the street, it's very dangerous. Um, what is your two-wheel ride? I have a Ducati S4R that I rode yesterday. It was great. It was, uh, as I mentioned before, it was good fun. De De is it Devon or Devon? Mon, another American in WRC. I was thinking about that just the other day when I was watching um, some WRC, and I was thinking how kick-ass it would be to go out there with uh, and, and give it a run. You know, it's an expensive sport, but it's like joining the military. you got to commit for five years because you're not going to get up to speed right away. Uh, Ken has been getting faster and faster as he's been you know, getting better and better at making pace notes, but year after year you have to be on the notes. So yeah, I've been debating. Um, I know you're from Colorado. Yep, Brian, of course. I just got accepted to the University of Colorado. <coughs> debating on going or not. Any thoughts on Colorado Springs? I don't know the campus in Colorado Springs. I went to Boulder and I was just there the other day. The place rocks. It's awesome. Boulder's kick-ass. I moved from Boulder to Steamboat, which was like Boulder was 20 years ago, but a little more rancher-ish. Um, these are, you know, any towns that basically survive and, like, uh, you know, their nucleus is, like, the place that makes, makes the best margaritas is a good place in my book. And uh, Boulder also is such an outdoor fitness thing. I, I used to rock climb five days a week there, and uh, uh, I really miss the climbing, actually. So being back in Boulder just made me want to jump around on rocks. Um, I've been wanting to check out local rally driving school. Dirtfish would be good. There's also uh, Tim, uh, Tim O'Neill up in North Carolina. And then there's the Winter Driving School in Steamboat, Colorado, if you're in Central. I think it's winterdrive.com might be the website still. I was an instructor there for eight years, but that's a good place. Um, yeah. First, I would probably go to the Winter Driving School. And, and because on ice, there you learn a lot of disciplines that uh, you just don't get in the gravel. But... Good luck. It's all fun. That's Kyle. Um, will the show air in Canada, Top Gear? I think it will. I think it already is. Maybe I may be wrong. Um, Karen, hi Tanner. When will you find out if they cleared the black card and move you up to second? Oh, uh, November 5th. Thank you for asking though, Karen. Yeah, it should be November 5th. Man, I am 12 minutes behind. This is brutal. 
How many horsepower does the Fiesta have? Somewhere between 550, 575. That's uh, from Christian, yeah, and it's it's all here right now with a lot of any lag. Um, be a good fit in monster truck and monster trucks. You know what's so funny is I took Dennis Anderson for a ride in the drift car twice. I've taken him for a ride in the drift car, and he said the same thing. He just came to me. He's like, "Come on, three months. I need three months of your time. We're gonna come in my backyard. We're gonna put you in a monster truck. We're gonna run you around. It's gonna be good fun. You can catch some air. You know, bounce around a little bit. And then I need you for three months. January, February, March. That's a whole season. Done. Done deal." And uh, Dennis Anderson is such a ridiculous class act. You would, I mean, that guy is a born leader, and uh, I'd pretty much follow him anywhere, I think, and I'd love to try monster trucks. Um, when Pastrana went and tried a monster truck, he did one big jump and knocked himself out in his own monster truck, but he's had a lot of concussions. So just to give you an idea of how hard the landings are, but um, we'll see. Those are those are good three months for me because uh, that's not a racing season. Um, Bill, you're the best driver. Well, thank you, Bill. Um, paddle shift or stick? I prefer manual. However, my M3 is an SMG, which I didn't intend on buying that SMG. I bought it from Stefan Papadakis when I first moved to California. And uh, for Los Angeles, i got to say it's pretty awesome. Um, the newer... Paddle shifts for if you are a city dweller are not bad, but if you enjoy driving and get a chance to get out of the city, then yeah, I, I still like being a little connected to the gear. Um, Mike, will you, Adam and Rutledge, please wear Clarkson Mayhem and wigs on that episode of Top Gear? <laughs> Do you know how heavy those wigs would those wigs would be? Have you seen the hair that's that's on May? Come on, James has got so much hair. Uh, the and and obviously we wouldn't be able to find anything that would even cover the central part of Rutledge's head. Um, also, would you ever star have a medium-sized part in a movie? I didn't see Drive. I got called to do the driving for Drive, and I've unfortunately had to turn away a lot of movies uh, doing Top Gear, but I've been having a lot of fun. And I didn't see the movie Drive. Um. And I don't know about doing a cameo on a movie. It'd be it'd be fun. You know I'm about the driving, though. But it would be fun. Um, okay, let's go on to uh, Rachel. On a scale of one to mad, how upset you were when Rutledge stole your truck after shooting some Top Gear? He stole my truck. Who stole my truck? Did he st oh, that's right, behind the scenes thing. Oh, good pull. Look at that. Um, I was not mad at all because I knew that he would probably take it a lot easier on that truck than I ever would. He's slow. I don't know if you know that or not. He's, he's very gentle. He's a big man with a gentle touch. Um, <laughs> oh, Sorry, Rutledge, if you're there. Uh, you ever travel to Canada to do rally racing? Um, used to haven't in a long time. I like Canada. People are friendly. That's what I'm sure they hear that a lot. I was up in Banff. I did uh, I did a driving school actually on the Olympic O-ring in Banff, which is a 500 meter ice thing. We got up to 45 miles an hour in these little BMWs. It was awesome. And they were they were taking like breaks, like these 2-hour breaks where the the national skating teams would just come in and they would skate and then they would stop and then the cars would go rip around this this O-ring and you know, all the Croatian teams and Korean teams, everything just stand there staring at these cars on their sacred ice. It was really sacrilegious. Um, when you come over to Belgium and doing an event, Tanner, next year, ERC, hopefully. European Rallycross Championship. Uh, they just released the schedule on ERC24.com. Uh, great to see Hot Wheels Jump was awesome. Well, thank you. That was from Mick. Um, I would love to do another big jump again, but Travis Pastrana needs to break that record. So come on, Travis, go do it. And then, uh, then I can light that Hot Wheels fire again. That would be great. I've got some ideas that I want to try out. And Hot Wheels is such a good company to do that because they've already built them. They're on the shelves of every, uh, store in America. So, uh, now you just get to strap in and do it for real. 
Um, okay, Jordan, you have a question about the Octane Academy. And I don't know if I should skip ahead or not because it's 15 minutes back now and I'm feeling pretty bad for keeping you on for 15 minutes, Jordan. Um, can we participate with all my team? We run autocross in France. We're six drivers and we are French, so I don't know if we can participate. I don't think being French will uh, take you out of the running, to be honest with you, but six altogether probably will because they're going to give away a car to the winner and they're not going to want to give you six cars. I'll just tell you that right now. But... Um, uh, we run in autocross and runs. It would be best to, uh, let's be honest. Your biggest competitors are your teammates. It's time to break free of those other five. They're just holding you back. I have a feeling, Jordan. Um, you're probably tight friends, but remember, your greatest competitor is the guy sitting in the identical car. Great friends. I'm sure you're great friends. Don't take that the wrong way. That's maybe a little bit much pure, too pure competition coming out, but I'm just saying... Um, it's going to be one person at a time at the Octane Academy. Brooke, what's the scariest thing you've ever done? In the last three hours? Um, let's see. Why, that's a tough question, Brooke. I would say the Hot Wheels jump is one of them. Um, but I've stayed in some pretty scary hotels that would be right up there also. So, uh... Sleeping anywhere near Willow Springs is probably the one, Brooke. Um, Fred Weiss. Hey, Tanner, just saying hi. Looking forward to seeing you back in the East Coast for Rallycross. Well, thank you, Fred. We'll, uh, we'll see you out there. I don't know when that is, but I think it's in the spring for GRC. Would you be a drift instructor? Krista, yes, I have been, and it is nauseating, um, but fun. A little bit frustrating because drifting is one of those things that you either get it quick or you don't get it quick. And when you don't get it quick, it's a lot of tire changing and it's uh, it's brutal on a, on a drifting instructor. Dean Brown, good to hear from you, bud. Um, Brendan loves your rock star Ford. Are you working in any movies? I haven't done a movie in a while. There's some potentially coming up, but um, it's... Uh, uh, it, it's a little bit tricky unless the movies happen to be shooting just in January, February, March, which maybe there are some that I can't really mention. But it's, um, yeah, I miss doing the movies. Those projects just take a while, little while. Uh, and Ross, out of the Fiesta and the V8 Scion, uh, the Fiesta is more fun because it is a just a huge challenge, but I miss the, I miss the NASCAR engine sound of that Scion. I miss beating that thing. Um... Which is, uh, yeah, it's a, that, that, that car was a lot of fun. And I miss drifting with the guys. I miss doing Formula D. I'm not planning on doing it next year, but I do miss drifting with all the Formula D guys. Uh, I miss everything except the, the judging, and that's the hard part. And I guess they've got to find a new judge. Anybody, I won't find out for 17 minutes, but did anybody uh, sign up to be the third judge? Anybody know that? Um, favorite movie? It used to be Rushmore. Um, Groundhog Day at one time. Uh, apparently I'm a Bill Murray fan. Um, Hangover was awesome. I could watch that about three more times. I'd probably have to pick into those. Um, Top Gear UK versus US? I don't know. I don't know, uh, when that will happen. I've gone over there a couple times, but I haven't seen them over there. Um, craziest tweets? I don't want to talk about it shocking really just dead just scary uh scary scary tweets not really i don't get scary tweets i get good tweets uh you guys are good uh okay i've already read that one let me s jump up a little bit here um greatest fear heights or spiders krista really you you're pulling those out um out of uh <laughs> Out of those, wait a minute. Let's talk about you for a second. Are you also uh, the one that asked me the scariest thing I've done? No, no, somebody else. Okay, I'm gonna say maybe if there's some issues we should we should talk about. But um, out of those height, let's see. You mentioned uh, heights and spiders. I'll take spiders. I don't. I'm not a big fan of spiders. They're pretty, pretty uh, awesome, awesome creatures, and I respect that. I just don't like them crawling on me. It was basically once I read that you eat like 
like it was measured in weight, the weight of spiders that you eat per year while you're sleeping. Um, it was more than just a couple, average. Granted, maybe some people in Missouri eat more than, you know, people in the rest of the country, but still. Um, when, Rebecca, when will the Rockstar merch be available? Uh, it's a good question. Um, Etnies has all the stuff. I know it's not available on link on my site. On Rally America site, it is available. Um, it's rally-america.com, but uh, it should be available on my site within the next two weeks. And we've already got the whole next line already designed, so it's a, it's a little bit late. Sorry about that. Megan Thornton. Would I consider coming to Chattanooga? I love that place. Beautiful bridges. Um, better in the fall. It's amazing. Try our dangerous roads called the W Road. I will note that down. I have no pen, but I'll remember. It's the W Road. Um, there's a part of Pikes Peak called the W's. Um, my husband's an Aussie. V8 supercar racing is awesome. I did not see the Bathurst 1000 this year, but uh, it's probably something I can catch up with because Rockstar sponsors a car there, and so maybe I can get a video of it. But I love the V8 supercar racing. was literally in a conversation yesterday about trying to figure out how to go do a race or two with Ford. Fastest I've gone was 223, Steven Sanchez, and uh, 223 in a mile, standing mile, in, the, in a Ford GT. Cars are in my garage book. Brooke, come on, that's so personal for a guy like me. That is just, that's, uh, but there is a um, Ducati S4R, uh, an E46 M3, and a Porsche Turbo sitting out there, along with a big beach cruiser bike and a surfboard. Um, any chance of coming back to Formula D? It was asked, but uh, not next year. Um, maybe after that, love the series, love the people involved, miss the driving, frankly. Um, let's see, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, I apologize. Uh, Matt, yes, Dana Point is, is cool. Yes, and I was a Navy brat also. Um, there's the wigs thing again. Let me jump ahead. Where do you see Autosports going? Well, I mean, Christopher, it's going to go all over the... It's going to keep doing what it's doing, but Rallycross, I think, is going to grow. It's got good television. It's got good manufacturer support. And the drivers are getting um, interested in the States. And if it can be as competitive as it is in Europe, here in the States, um, it's going to be insane. It's a matter of getting the right tracks down and trying not to Americanize it too much with like just making it made for TV. It's got to be good for spectators, too. But Rallycross is going to be a good one, I think. And it's, uh, it's a good thing because it's making small cars look cool, and that's uh, an important thing. We're one of the last countries who don't necessarily um, have small sports cars. Um, are the three of you friends offset at Top Gear? Yes. Do we bug each other like siblings? Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're friends. We eat dinner together after the shoots. It's not like cut and everybody walks different ways, pulls out their cell phone. Oh God, Routledge was drooling on himself again. I just let him do it. You know, blah, blah. You know it's, not, it's not like that. We're, we're good buds. Um, you ever think the Toyota would make something like the LFA? Well, they make the Lexus, but call it a Toyota? Um, Matt, Alain, let's see. What's your opinion on the Toyota 4Runner? Uh, amazing off-road and reliability. I've done many stunts and 360s in those and uh, they they take a beating with the best of them. Um, the, new, the, 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 new, the second half of season two, I guess, will start airing, I think, in the spring or maybe late February, something like that. Answer one time, Tanner. Yeah, I don't get that. I don't. Um... Would I do Pikes Peak Hill Climb? Absolutely. Selena, are you kidding me? I'm all about Pikes Peak. I love that race. Uh, did I compete in a Pro-Am series to get in Formula D? No. When I got started, Formula D was the Pro-Am series. I did, my first event was a, first event was a Invitational, Laguna Seca um, Invitational. I did it in the Jasper Supra. 
and um, then I start and then I started doing um, drift events, you know, with with the guy who started Drift Buffet and um, and doing Formula D events with a couple different companies. Then McKinney was the first like team that I did that I worked with, and then I was with Papadakis and AEM. It was a it was a great path to be on. Um, plans to do the Indy 500. I tried about eight years ago. I'll try again. I'm sure at some point. Um, Indy 500, greatest race in the world, biggest race in the world. Uh, so um, it's one of those that uh, is a pretty incredible thing to, to be a part of, so I'd love to. Um, Dean Brown, don't ever lose the tongue thing. Appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> oh, gosh, how did that become a topic? Um Uh, friendship. Okay, I did answer the friendship, Colin McRae, and I and I am recording this, so I'll be able to get that. Pastrana. Um, I have started competing with when this is uh, Gabero. Uh, Pastrana is um, uh, first time I met Travis was at a rally event. He had just started. He was in his second or third year of rally racing, as was I, and then we were also teammates on that 2006 Subaru rally team. Um, with Colin McRae and Ken Block, and uh, I really like Travis. Travis is a class act. He's a there's a lot more to him than a lot of people think. Uh, just some daredevil guy willing to do anything for the fun of it. I mean that's 99% of him, but he's uh, no he there's a lot more to him. He's a, he's a really cool cat, and uh, I'm really glad that he's uh, uh, you know having having fun in his world, and hopefully his leg gets better soon. Um, Scott Gilbert, do you think your fellow four drivers will win the NASCAR championship? Mm, it's going to be tough at this point, isn't it? But Carl's, uh, Carl's got to get cranking again. Carl is another one of those guys who's very cool. I've done race of champions with him as a teammate and race of champions with Pastrana as a teammate. Um, and Carl's is one of those guys. I saw him on the plane. I was flying coach class, uh, on the way over there. Because that's our own Carl was back there. Guy's got his own jet. He's flying coach class back there with his uh, trainer. And we just hang out and talked. Had a good time. He, he's just one of those guys that talked to him. And um, and uh, he's just so down to earth. Uh, the first time I met him was about eight, nine years ago before he was doing NASCAR. We did a teen driver training school for Ford together. He was doing sprint car stuff back then. Do I have time to play video games? No. I have got a PlayStation and Xbox sitting right there, and I've got games I want to I want to practice the Nurburgring on. Um, I've got a pitiful steering wheel set up, but it works. And uh, no, I don't get a chance to do it. I am home for like a day, so I'm gonna try. Um, Kelly, let's get married. Is that was that it? Was that the question? I, I'm that is so flattering. I will be honest with you. Um, and thank you for watching the show. And, uh, uh, thanks Kelly. So, uh, hubby and I, this is from Angela, had our first son three weeks ago, named him Tanner. Wow. That is awesome. You guys are cool. Thank you for that. Um, what's a typical day? No such thing, Krista. It, uh, it's kind of like, um, living in a place with really bad weather. You just wake up and take it as it comes and enjoy it. Hope that you're in the mood for rain if it's raining. And in my world, uh, if it has to do with driving, then I'm in the mood for it. So I'll take whatever comes. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. When I'm home, like I'm home for a day or two, um, I've got to fit like two or three months of life, you know, covering, making sure bills are covered, uh, making sure that things aren't leaking at the house, you know, just regular stuff. Um, have to fit all that into a couple days, registering cars um best part of being me scarlet is uh is uh, following a dream chasing down a dream of of um being able to pay the bills by doing something you love to do that's uh that's the the simple answer um how are your chances for doing erc next year uh i really want to so uh, we'll know by the end of SEMA, which is in two weeks. Uh, the schedule is just released. There's a ton of conflicts in the schedule for ERC, and 
that has been a battle since uh, I've started doing drifting and rally racing, um, two series at the same time, which I started doing uh, seven years ago, and every single year there's been conflict. So it's nothing new, but it's always a headache. So we have to figure that out. Um, painted my car the same. You painted your car the same as my Fiesta, Kim? Kim David Merkins? That is awesome. That has got to be a sight going down the street. You're going to have to put a picture on, fa on like, send me a Facebook note of the picture of that. That's pretty rad. How much do I charge for teaching drifting? It's just a box of Dramamine and some water, please. That's, uh, that's what we're talking about, Tanya. And then it's time. It's just, uh, it's, dif it's difficult to get together. I've, I've taught a couple people drifting, but it's a, it, it is a difficult thing. It's a tricky thing time-wise. Can I borrow that cord? Thanks, Victoria. Um, are you looking forward to visit ERC Hungary? Yes, Hungary. Wait, did we do Hungary this year? No, it was out of the season this year. And yes, I'm looking forward to it next year. Um, I think Liam won in Hungary last year, so that will be tricky, but uh, hopefully there aren't conflicts on this year. Uh, uh, have you ever thought about acting? I'm not an actor. Let's be honest. Let's, if there's going to be a remake of Back to the Future, I'd have to play Marty McFly. Thank you from Turkey. Be Marty McFly for Halloween? I'd just get a vest. And some old Reeboks. That would be, uh... you know, it's a good idea, actually. If I do that, I who who asked that one? Because I, I feel like I. Um. Do you start in a remake of Gumball Rally? Yes. Isn't it a remake of the Gumball Rally? Did they do a movie on the Gumball Rally? Um. If you're talking about, like, Cannonball Run, hell yes. I would be all over that. And yes, I would do Monster Trucks, Jeremy. Uh, do you still have the Seawolf swag we gave you when we first met you at GRC here in Washington? Yes, I do. And the fact is, is that next to my garage door, uh, I, I've been lucky and I've gotten a couple medals there. And uh, I've got those sitting right there. So thank you, Sarah. Um, what did I like most about the Raptor? Um, well, I've got one now. I've got the four-door. Um, the two-door is probably a little sporty off, sportier off-road since it's a shorter wheelbase. But here's the sad thing. I have taken it off-roading, and um, it's great. Uh, what I like most about it is just that there's no worries. There's no drama at all. It's the car that if you're driving into downtown or you're driving in a place where there's construction, they've got curbs that you have to drive over or, or whatever, um, it's just who cares. You never even think about it. It's it just goes uh, over everything. It's incredibly smooth. The interior is very quiet. Now I sound like I'm selling them, but I'm not. But it's um, it's just easy. So if if you need something to drive on the days when you just want uh, no drama, that's the one. Jennifer Nicole, look at you. Um. Can we see you in some Recaro video? Do you know, Jennifer, I put out a Recaro video without you even knowing it, and I don't think Recaro knows it, and I didn't know it. But um, there, I did uh, some driving in Nürburgring. I literally was just in Nürburgring for three days because it was uh, between races. I had no, uh, no plans in Europe, and I didn't want to fly back and forth. So I went there. Ford gave me an RS500 to drive just as a... So I didn't have to take my rental car, which was very nice of them. And um, a guy came and videotaped some stuff. I put some cameras on there, which I later found out you weren't supposed to do. But there was a big Recaro sticker on their Ford thing. So um, it turned into a Recaro video. Check it out, Jen. Um, have I driven a Subaru Rally Team car? The American Subaru Rally Team, which is uh, Vermont sports car. Yes, I have. And I've driven the new one, <laughs> actually, for Top Gear when we did uh, a... Thing. Compared to the Ford, it's different. Um, uh, the Ford was a specific rally cross car, not a rally car. The rally car is higher, softer. Um, 
just flows over stuff, has great grip in the really bumpy sections where the Ford is just a twitchy, instant power, um, much more like a fighter jet feeling kind of car. And if it was high grip situation, the Ford would be quicker. Any chance coming to Colorado? Next week, we'll be. We'll be shooting some on, but uh, um, so won't be stopping anywhere, but we'll just be cranking. STI or Evo, that's not fair. Um, but I still think that uh, I still think I have a little bit more fun with the Evo on road and the STI off road. So if it's gravel roads, something rough, some jumps, the STI rules. If it's pavement smooth, something where you can use kind of the really precise steering that the Evo has, um, and the diffs, the diffs on the Evo, the active diff is creepy good. Uh, so there, there's that. Rear wheel drive or all wheel drive? Both, please. <laughs> like to swap back and forth. Front wheel drive's not even bad if it's, you know, if you get some variety. Um, but obviously for rallycross, I like all wheel drive uh, just because it's faster. Um, drifting and rear wheel drive for, for owning a car on the street, having rear wheel drive is actually really fun because when it rains, you know, you always feel like you have to be paying attention, which you always need to be doing, but you can feel that you're kind of at the limit with a rear wheel drive car in the rain. The M3 in the rain is unbelievable just because at any moment it could start sliding. So you just, you can't be drinking coffee or rock star. You, you have to be, um, you know, paying attention. And I like that feeling. Um, Ken Block has a shoe. Yes, many. When are yours coming out? Um, Etnies, uh, we may have a special edition Etni shoe coming out. I hope. Cross fingers. It'd be cool. Um, so there is a Rockstar version of uh, the Etnies shoe that I wear all the time. But, um, yeah, maybe we'll have a, a special edition. I don't know what mine, maybe the tongue will hang out on mine. I don't know. God, I can't believe that is an issue. Um... Uh, will I run in Sweden next year? I w yes, I want to run in Sweden next year. I, I've seen on the schedule in the last couple days there's a conflict with X Games. We'll see if something changes. That was from Anton. Let's go up to Amy. Let's scroll, scroll ahead. I apologize, anybody that I miss. Um, 14 minutes away. I want to make sure we get some of the latest questions here. Um, uh, there's some from yesterday. Okay, and, and some from yesterday. Karen, I don't know who the Stig... Or I can't say who the stick is. I can just say that they're a very good driver. Um, last time I got pulled over was in Colorado when I was trying to meet my friends for a bachelor party that I was doing a Ford charity event in Detroit. So I came for the day after the bachelor party. I came Sunday morning. They were up in the mountains in Colorado. I was driving up there and uh, got pulled over, but it was it was okay. There was just uh, some confusion when the speed zone changed. Trudy Weber, how are you? What uh, what was your question? You say, please, let me go back. You know, oh, in Chicago, yes. Is that where Chicago is? It's in the, oh, it's right there in the middle. I've been just wandering around looking for that place. Haven't been able to find it. Look, um, But Trudy, good to hear from you. I haven't uh, seen you in a long time. It would be it would be good to see you and your family, which uh, looks beautiful. Um, Chevy Camaro ZL1. I was just looking at uh, some of that yesterday, trying to get one to drive on Top Gear. So when I do get to drive one, I will be letting you know everything that I think about that car. Uh, pretty amazing power for a street car, isn't it? Incredible how muscle cars have kind of done like this full circle thing, and now we're getting into the really crazy power again, the, the horsepower battle between the Mustang and the Camaro. It's, it's got to be making our parents really happy. Um, the best car for a newly licensed teen. Well, it used to be that you had to, you know, my feeling was get like a 74 Nova, big giant car like that but after crashing a lot of cars and stunts and for TV shows I can tell you that the small cars with modern crash technology are way better than the old cars with none um, Trudy tap tap yes this thing is on sorry 10 minutes ago you did that um, so I would say a Fiesta or a Focus duh no I would say um, for a, a actually gosh the new the 
the new Focus has so much cool stuff, the park assist and everything like that, but for a new driver, you don't want to be assisted parking. You need to learn all that stuff on your own. Um, but something small is so convenient. Um, the Fiesta really is an amazing little car. I hate to push it too much since I race one, but um, I'm, I'm really proud of the, the street version of those cars. They're cool. Um, don't forget to feed your hamster. That's not funny. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Sunny, any tattoos? No, I don't have any tattoos. Hope that's not disappointing. Um, I am drinking Rockstar, of course. What kind of question is that? Um, iPhone. I have an iPhone, Tanya. Uh, and I am a Steve Jobs fan. Uh, ever since I got the iPhone, I've just started buying Mac stuff. I'm talking to you on a MacBook Pro. That's a 13-inch. I swapped a 15-inch for the 13-inch, and I and I don't think it was a good call. I uh, probably next time will go back, but you know it always takes a year or two. Um, and I don't have an iPad. I gave mine away, so I need to get another one. But yeah, I've turned into a Mac freak. It's ridiculous. Um, favorite car ever, Brian Ceiling fan. One of the best cars out there is really the M3, but favorite car to drive is the Zonda. It was just an amazing experience. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit again. Oh, I have to see Gumbarelli Netflix streaming. Okay, I will check it out. Thank you, Chris. Um, how much did I enjoy kicking Paul Tracy's butt battle of the supercar? Since Paul is a great driver, I absolutely love that other Chris. Um, I started racing about 16, 17 years ago, James, um, and I'm not your uncle. Uh, what's that? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to skip ahead. Sorry, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and answer, um, a few more and then I've got to go to that, uh, meeting with some of the guys from, um, uh, previous life at Formula D. Um, next year is going to be my first season running Formula Drift, Corey. Nice. That is awesome. I'll be running a V8-powered Z original. I'm just kidding. That's still very cool. Uh, I used to, you used to run a Z, being me. Okay, yes, I'm with you. Hold on. Let me. You, I just lost your question. Um, what are your thoughts on the particular chassis with your biggest advice for running that series? Um, well, the Z rear subframe has some issues that you'll learn to deal with. Using a tall sidewall rear tire won't hurt. Uh, keep the suspension a little bit on the soft side. Make the car understeer, as in like, uh, I like to run skinny tires up front and fat ones on the back. You have to drive really, really committed, but it means that it's a lot more difficult to spin out. And um, try to get the weight balance uh, as far back as you can with that Z, with that big heavy V8 up front. But you're going to have a blast, and congratulations. Um, rallycross practice session for John, not probably going to happen, uh, in Colorado, uh, we'll be shooting there in the next couple weeks, but we'll be deep, deep, deep into the woods trying to kill each other. Um, what do I think of David Kern? I don't know David Kern, but if he races Pike's Peak, he's probably a good guy in my book. Um... Wow, I skipped ahead a lot. Uh, yes, Hannah. I, yeah, MacBook does rock. It's doing good. I, that's why I was asking about the new Lion thing, because I keep swiping the wrong direction. I, like, go to reach for a key and my thumb drags, and uh, before I know it, I'm all over the place. Randy, best Porsche in history. That is a really tough question. I've been so lucky to drive s some good ones, and uh, somehow I got to drive Jerry Seinfeld's Porsche that is um, the Le Mans 917, the number 20, you know, the one with the Gulf um, colors, blue and orange, and you know, with the flat V12 or flat 12, and it was awesome. It was incredible. Drove that in a Porsche commercial directed by the very talented and famous Jeff Swart, and uh, it was uh, an absolute, I mean, ridiculous thing for the ears everybody and else in the commercial cracked their windows as i was going by just to hear that thing rev up is so sweet um 
any good jokes? You pretty much put me out, Amy, by asking if I knew good jokes. No, I, I've got terrible, terrible jokes. Um, do I need a house sitter, Brian? No. See this plant right here? Don't know if you can see that. It's fake. It's not a real plant. See, I'm gone all the time, so I've structured uh, the environment here to survive without me. I'm good, but thank you very much. Um, Carrie Potter Earl. You should say my name. It would make my... Oh, Carrie, well, hopefully that made your name. Uh, made your day. Is it, did I pronounce your last name right, though? It's Potter Earl. Um, is it early? It is early, actually. Here, anyway. Um, what made you start to drive rallycross? I was starting to get out of drifting, and uh, I, I watched Grunholm do a Sweden rallycross uh, on YouTube. Marcus Grunholm two-time rally world champion and it was awesome the cars were so ridiculously fast it looked like so much fun uh i started asking uh rockstar how much interest they might have in in checking that out and to date rockstar is probably the biggest sponsor in rallycross worldwide um they it's such a cool thing that they literally are like well you think it's going to be cool and i say yeah it looks like it looks like a ton of fun and they're just they're they're into it so um it's been uh it's been great. Jesse, Radar Love. Choice of music behind the wheel. I don't think that's changed since high school. That's sad. No, I like I like a lot of things. On uh satellite rate or on um satellite radio I listen to chill a lot because uh just kind of cruise down and takes takes me away from the uh the traffic in LA. I also like listening to uh the Laugh Factory, is it or the Laugh Channel? Um, thanks, Tanya. Nice to see another Apple fan. Uh, Angie answered that one. Don't know if I'm coming back to Formula D. Um, Chuck Walla Valley Raceway, Randy. I like it. Great for motorcycles. I want to go out there, uh, and, and do the Jason Pridmore school. I rode on the back of a motorcycle, Jason Pridmore, who was the guy, if you remember, when Michael Jordan was getting into ride, racing motorcycles. That's the team that he got involved with. Pridmore has these things where it, the gas tank actually have handles on them. And so you sit second seat back there while he's ripping. And I did this around Sonoma and you can feel the gas tanks coming up and that's because you're doing wheelies down the straightaways and even out of the corners doing wheelies. It was unbelievable. So Pridmore has a school set up down there. I want so bad to have a little bit of time to cruise down and, uh, ride on the track. I've never ridden on a racetrack. Uh, for me, I'm a recreational rider, but, uh, I'd, I'd love to improve my skills that way. Randy, yes, the 917 rocks. Pretty amazing. Um, Schneider, a few movies I worked in. Uh, most recently that isn't out, or one recently, is uh, called Red Dawn. It's a remake of the old Patrick Swayze movie. Um, apparently that one's been kind of re-edited a little bit, but that was so much fun. It's pretty much like a stress reliever uh, job because I just bashed through people's backyards for two weeks straight. Um... And then, uh, and that was shot in Detroit. I've done Iron Man movies and uh, Born, Born Ultimatum in New York and Fast and Furious 3 and 4. Drifting in Fast and Furious 3 was probably the most fun just because it uh, was the most driving. It was like three months of work and all the, pretty much all the drifting shots were done for real. And the cars were good. And then Dukes of Hazard was my first movie I worked on, which was uh, a surreal experience to be in the General Lee. Having grown up, watched it, watching it rip around in the dirt roads. Which, by the way, the TV show was shot in the valley. Um, like, what was it called? Thousand Oaks. And we did some of the shooting for the movie there. And it was creepy to see these roads. Oh, like, I know that turn, you know? And it's like, man, I thought I could have sworn that was out in somewhere in the east, but it was in California. Why do I keep getting skipped? Philip, I'm sorry. Let me scroll down and see what you've asked here. Philip, 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 Philip. I don't see anything, Philip. All I can say is lo siento mucho, my friend. Where are you? Um, I'm just trying to catch up a little bit and not be late for this meeting, so I apologize, Philip. Um, Krista, your birthday is coming up. Come to Reno and make an appearance in November. Reno in November. Is it snow in Reno? It does, doesn't it? And there's some skiing right there. That would be fun, actually. Happy birthday, anyway. Um, but let's be honest. 
coming up. November's pretty far away, isn't it? What is it now? Oh, no, it's not. Oh, my gosh, it's middle of October already. Um, <laughs> sorry, Krista, I was about to give you a little grief for that. I didn't know if you were like, if you had a birthday month kind of a thing. But uh, coming up in November, that's awesome. Happy birthday. Uh, significance of number 34. Don't know where that question came from, but um, uh, significance of 34. It happened to be my number in the drift car early on, and then it happened to be my number the first year at X Games. And uh, the team that was running our Subaru at X Games in the first year, 2000. Is actually 2007. Um, they they had won the championship when their car was number 34. It had been my drift car number. I was 34 years old, and it was like, okay, whatever. We'll just let's just stick with this number. And uh, so then the following year, I used it as well and got double gold. And so it just sort of stuck um, from then on. Basically, it's what I just wanted to do. Whatever the opposite that Ken did, he did 43. So I was like, well, I'm gonna do 34. <laughs> Not really. Um, okay, I want to find an older, inexpensive Porsche that I can work on for DE events. Recommendation. Um, DE events. You're going to have to define that for me. No, I don't mean to sound like a complete noob, but define it for me. DE events. The, um, inexpensive older Porsche may not exist. They, be, they got really popular 10 years ago. Um, but the one thing about buying an older Porsche is that uh, if you get one that has good um, records, you're not going to lose a dime on it. So you're pretty safe. Uh, I think 85 to 89 911Cs are probably the best because they have the G50 transmission and uh, they're strong. If I, I, you know, I've looked for one for the longest time, but if you're looking for even older then 911s. Then you still gotta you gotta start paying attention to what how it's been taken care of though. Um, what scene do you like most in Top Gear? My favorite is one you're driving in Evo. That was so fun. I, I you know I grew up a skier. My dad was an Olympic hopeful back in the 60s. Um, I grew up uh, skiing in Colorado all my life, and and having a powder day in a car is a dream that I've had. You know for a long, long time. So that was absolutely epic. And, uh, man, I could have just done that for a season. Maybe that should be a sport, but wow. Song Cho? Yes, it is. Uh, let's see. Whoops. I just got a different kind of message. Um, is there any chance you would work for, I could work for your team? Chris Morton? Sure there is. Um, they're a bunch of Swedish guys, so sometimes they're hard to understand. They, they sound like smorgasbord and hootie booty, but somehow they actually communicate by just saying those words over and over again. Um, but yes, it's a, the company's called Oldsbergs MSE. They're out of Sweden. Look them up, send them your info. Um, uh, Ahmed. Uh, I love to drive Dirt 2 and Dirt 3. I don't have a car and I don't know how to drive. I only have passion. What should I do to try Gymkhana? I live in Bangladesh. Get a cheap car and just start playing around at events. I don't know what exists at Bangladesh to do that, but uh, there's got to be there's got to be some things you can do. More slippery the surface, the better. Drive around in the ice. Drive around in the gravel. Preferably the ice. Two more questions? All right, two more questions. Sorry, got to go. Um, are you into Porsches like I am? If yes, are you going to buy the new 991 Carrera, which is the sexiest thing on earth? It is a beautiful car. I have to be honest, I, uh, I don't tend to buy so many new cars, but if I had the means and the will, that would be an amazing machine to have. Um, I tend to buy like sort of... Uh, culty cars I want to keep for a long time. I get to drive a lot of new cars for, for my job, so it's it's kind of nice that way. But um, I have not driven the 991 yet. I can't wait. Uh, when's the next Ustream live event going to be, Alain? Uh, that is a very good question. What is it now? It's the 21st. 
and we're going to be traveling uh, until the 7th of November, so maybe like the 8th of November. Is that too far? Victoria says that's okay. Um, so maybe around the 8th of November. Sorry if it's too long. And it's something that I can probably do from Europe also. So if we figure something out before then. Um, maybe from uh, Perry, which uh, will be next weekend. I'm looking forward to a long weekend there. Um, hey, Tanner, have you at least answered one of my questions about a minute ago? Joy, I don't know. How about let me scroll down? I know that I haven't said your name, Joy. I'm sorry. Let's see. So I must not have answered your question. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Um, Ian, glad you're going to O'Neill. Uh, don't hit things in O'Neill and don't roll it. Wipe the slate clean before you go, Ian. Um, the thing that keeps me sane while driving is that for some reason, literally inexplicably, I just love to drive. Joy, I am looking for your question, and I don't see anything. I'm looking down. I'm 13 minutes ago here, Joy, and I'm still going. Ian, wow, you've been a busy typer. If you had to choose car or women, seriously, Ian? You're just trying to set me up there. It's bad news. Um, let's see. Joy, Joy, Joy. Joy, I'm 21 minutes ago, and uh, yeah, I, sorry, I didn't answer one of your questions. I didn't find it. Anyway, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Um, not coming to Minnesota anytime soon, Joy. There you go. There you are. Um, wait, Minnesota. I mean, there's a great rally race in Minnesota. I don't think we have anything Top Gear related in Minnesota. In Minnesota. But I love going up there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sorry I missed your earlier question. I'm going to be late. You're right. Uh, bye, Carrie. What's that? Yeah, we have, um, as Victoria's reminding me, you can uh, post questions on Facebook. I'm getting better at responding to those in Twitter, slowly getting better. And Victoria helps me with some of those, but I try to answer as many as I can on, on myself. And um, thank you guys very much. Have a good day. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.